with Rosetta Johnson today as she's telling us a little bit about being a jazz singer. How old were you when you performed in front of your first audience? I was about 17 when I uh, started singing. Uh, it was a group of girls. We used to go to different churches on Sunday, and we would just sing free, about four of us. But one night, both of the leaders got in an argument, and I was not a leader. I was a background right? sang alto. And both leaders got in an argument, so that meant we couldn't go to the church. So then I slipped and went to the club. My mother thought we were going to the church. So <laughs> I went to the club, and I saw this lady on the stage. He didn't supposed to have let me in, but he let me in. And I asked, I said, let me see the manager. I said, because I can sing just as good as that lady they got up on that stage. And so he waited until most of the crowd left. And then he let me get up. And I did this song, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. People gave me a standing ovation. That's the first time I ever sang in a club and I was scared to death. I was choking the microphone. But that was my first time, I was 17. Now, now in, in the churches, it was fine because I had, you know, four other girls around, you know. I wasn't by myself. That was the first time I sang by myself. What is your favorite song to sing? My favorite song? Oh, I have so many favorites. Actually, I love, I like singing love songs, but uh, I guess my favorite song would be At Last. The song was made by Ella James. And, and the one that I wrote, it's a gospel called Good Morning Jesus. You must hear that. That's when I was going through with uh, being afraid of having surgery for cancer, breast cancer. And so while I was waiting, I was diagnosed in 1993, and I was so scared to have surgery until I waited until 1997 before having the surgery done. I really waited almost too long. So while I was waiting during that long time, I asked God, I said, please heal me. I just, I know you can heal me. I know you can heal me. But the Lord wanted me to trust him through surgery. So that's been 11 years ago. But while I was waiting, he gave me that song. The song is called Good Morning Jesus. You must hear it. Where's the furthest place you have traveled to perform? Japan. I had a chance wow. to go to Japan I, with the praise team. Uh, Tokyo and Osaka. And I'm trying to think of the other. Uh, I can't, uh, and Nagoya were the three places I sang in Japan. That was the furthest. Where else have you lived other than Birmingham? Well, my home is Tuscaloosa, Alabama. That's where I was born. And, um, oh, I've, oh, I've been practically around the United States, but uh, I didn't live long anywhere. Most of what I was doing was performing. Then I would come back here. Birmingham was like my base home where I would come back to. Are you releasing a new CD anytime in the future? Well, right now, it's just a Christmas CD I'm focusing on right now. What's been your inspiration for your new CD? Well, I, this Christmas CD I'm about to do now, uh, I was awarded $5,000 to uh, pursue my career from the cultural arts. And so I had never done a Christmas CD, so this is what I'm working on now with that award that I received from the Cultural Arts. So it should be out, and I'm going to try to have it ready in October when they start playing Christmas stuff, October, November, something like that. Mm -hmm. You got to hear it, it's something else. What is your most exciting place yet, son? Let's see. Hmm. I think I liked it so well in Japan because the people are so different there. They are so friendly, they are so warm, 
And I didn't think I would ever meet anybody that was, and I thought they were phonies, but I found out that they were really genuine people. They really love people, and it, they just make you feel so welcome. And that's about the most favorite place in Japan, really, to be honest. Someone told me that you turned down a chance to sing with the Supremes in the 60s. What made you turn it down at that time? I was working at this nightclub, the full one nightclub, and I was packing them in. So the manager told me, if you go if, where they want you to come to Detroit, they're going to put you on dope. They're going to have you just strung out. You're going to be a drug addict. And he had me so scared because I was 17. I was so scared to go, and that's why I wouldn't, they flew someone down from Motown, from Detroit, Michigan, and two times he flew down to meet with me. They had heard me audition with Al Green, and uh, this is why they knew about my voice, because I had auditioned in Michigan, in Detroit one time on a talent show. And so uh, they looked for me. They, they remembered my voice from that, ta from that talent show. And, uh, and the boss at the 401 Club was telling me all these scary things because I was making money for him here at the 401 Nightclub. So when he told me that they were going to have me a drug addict and all that, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't even talk to the man as he, you know, each time he flew down. So this is why I, I didn't actually turn him down. I was afraid to take the chance. Sandys, who wrote hit songs for Whitney Houston, Gladys Knight, and Aretha Franklin, also wrote several songs for you, including your hit single, A Woman's Way. How did you meet Mr. Dees? Okay, well, he met me through singing in this nightclub, 401. I sang there for many years, many years. I think I was almost... And I think I was about 20 when he started. Because, see, I started from 17, and I think I was 20 or 21 years old when Sam came out and heard me sing at the club. He got with uh, Jesse Lewis here in Birmingham, and they said, well, we need to get her. We need to record her. And so he, I, I recorded about, they used me because I didn't know what I was doing. I was young, immature. And I just stopped because they loved to hear me sing. I thought, oh gosh, you know, somebody want to pay me to sing and blah, 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 blah. I was just happy to do it because I love singing. But anyway, uh, he chose this song, and I don't know how it became national, but it did. It hit the national charts, and it went, it got in the top 40s, because uh, I think it went, I don't know how low it went, but. It was there, and, I, and the people that had gotten me together, they were too lazy to get a lot of jobs for me. I probably would have made a lot of money if, uh, if they had done right, but they were, not, they were not good people to work for. Sam could write, but when the business part came, he didn't know how to handle it either, because I think they used him too. Uh, a lot of songs that he's been getting money for, for writing, he didn't get it because you know, he, he got used, but he just kept writing. So he finally got with somebody that was right. And now he has offices in, in uh, England, an uh, office in Tennessee, he has an office in California. So evidently he got with somebody that did, right? In 2007, you were voted Best Female Vocalist at the Birmingham Area Music Awards. What was that like? Surprising, because there were three, two other great singers that was running also. And for me to win that trophy, I got it up on my TV now. I just look at it all the time because I don't believe it. But I was very surprised and I was very thankful that evidently I had gotten more calls, you know, more votes than the other two, but I was just surprised and I just said, it, God, I said, well, you want me to win something in my old age. <laughs> Another interesting fact about Rosetta Johnson is that she is in the Alabama Music Hall of Fame and 
the Alabama Jazz Hall of Fame. I recently purchased four of Rosetta Johnson's CDs. They are wonderful to listen to. The first one is Rosetta Johnson and Family, Good Morning Jesus. Rosetta Johnson sings her favorite jazz songs. Rosetta Johnson, I love you. Rosetta Johnson, you better keep what you've got. I really enjoyed interviewing Rosetta Johnson, and I liked finding out about her life as a jazz singer. And it's just amazing that a famous jazz singer like her can go to my church and be in my parents' Sunday school class. Because some, some pop stars and jazz singers and stuff like that, some of them aren't Christians, but Rosetta just happens to be one. I hope you enjoy this interview as much as I enjoy making it for you. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I've heard of. Once in a love